In Learning Module 1, we'll focus on the concepts commonly used by logical thinkers when discussing argumentation. Our major goal is to be able to recognize an argument and identify its components. We'll need to have this skill to be able to reconstruct and then evaluate arguments as either good or bad. So this unit is really preparing us to develop more sophisticated logical and critical reasoning skills later in the course. We need to be clear about our objectives. After completing this unit, these are the skills I'll expect you to be able to demonstrate. First, distinguish between claims that are accompanied by support and those that are not. Second, define what an argument is. Third, identify the premises and the conclusion of an argument and recognize their distinctive indicators. Fourth, Explain the descriptive, evaluative, and the normative dimensions of logical thinking. Fifth, identify the two stages of argument analysis, namely reconstruction and evaluation. Next, distinguish between arguments, explanations, conditional statements, and fictional discourse. And finally, reconstruct any given argument by disentangling its conclusion from the statements that are used to support it, that is, its premises. I'd like to finish with a quick look at a very famous argument from the history of philosophy. It's called the cosmological argument, and it's an attempt to prove the existence of a supreme being or God. Here's a simple version of the argument. Premise number one. Everything that exists has a cause of its existence. Premise number two. The universe exists. Premise number three, also functioning as an intermediate conclusion, so the universe has a cause of its existence. Premise number four, if the universe has a cause of its existence, then that cause can only be a supreme being. Conclusion, therefore, a supreme being must exist. Now, what do you think of this argument? Regardless of whether you're convinced by it, it satisfies our definition of what an argument is, since there are clearly statements of support being used as evidence for a conclusion. After you finish with this unit, you'll have a much clearer picture of how arguments are constructed, employed, and evaluated. Well, that's it. To get started, click on the link to Learning Module 1. I hope you'll enjoy our time together.